Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh it's lovely. Passion fruits. Um, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again, the podcast. Today, we are uh, discussing collaboration um, and art, collaboration in art, collaboration musically. We talk about all kinds of stuff. And my favorite bit was when we established the do's and don'ts and the pros and cons of collaborating both in the live. Oh, I think that's a kumquat, isn't it? Look at that. Or passion fruit, a young passion fruit. Um, yeah, and we talk about um, the do's and don'ts of collaborating live and in a writing scenario. Uh, I loved every second of it and I hope you do too. Thank you for watching. Justin Hawkins rides again. The jaws of victory, pitfalls of the music trade, collaboration and art. Justin Hawkins rides again, again. Regard, London cityscape. Again. Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins rides again. Today, we're beaming live, and well, not live, but direct <laughs> from a balcony here in London's Fitzrovia. It's really fancy posh. And if you look at the signs, there's even, um, what are they called? Passion fruit, passion fruit uh, plants yielding well passion fruits yes so which is ideal today um i'm joined by jenny may finn my producer um we're being filmed by bobby from <laughs> bad nerves <laughs> it's awesome isn't it it's brilliant all you got to do is say something nice about a band and then they come and do stuff for you yeah for money though as well yeah <laughs> so, you know, it's not going to be doing this for free so. we're not like that no that's not how we do we pay things. people yeah, we pay people handsomely. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> well, <laughs> reasonably. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, today we're going to be talking about, um, what is it again? Collaboration. The art of collaboration. The art of and <laughs> collaboration. Art. Of collaboration. Collaboration in the context of art and the art of collaboration. Yeah, in art. But especially <laughs> music, because this is what we do. We can uh, talk about your paintings, but... I feel like um, a collaborative... <laughs> visual efforts are more difficult to to achieve because you're crowded around the canvas well maybe when we on it at the same time oh you mean like when you draw a head yeah. and then you fold and it over fold, and that's let someone exactly do the next thinking. bit that's they were the best that's what it's like when you try and write songs collaboratively by correspondence is it yeah because since covid you sort of do you do a bit and you send it off to someone. But they can hear that bit. It's not like a blind bit. When you do the folding oh, game, you yeah. write, do the head and then you fold it, right? I think that. Also, <laughs> sometimes you do discuss things like key and Oh, no, it would be good. If you wrote a guitar riff, didn't tell anyone and said, just write a bass line and then put them all together and then see what happens. Just give them a... a that would explain the last darkness record. <laughs> wouldn't, <it? laughs> wouldn't that be good? Yeah, no. Um, oh. It would be disastrous. Um, so anyway, what... How, what what well, elements of collaboration did you want to discuss you're today? You're the one who's done it. I don't know. No. You've never collaborated on anything? No one's ever. Except we're not going to go back into that what, multiple lines I had on that song. Oh, yeah. But, but I mean. No, no. Oh, I guess I wrote a song when I was 16, 17. Or with somebody? Yeah. And then we played it live. It wasn't very good. <laughs> no, and there was no singer, so there was no lyrics. But when you're young, you always write rubbish. I mean, oh. one always writes rubbish songs when they're young. I think you have to get into... It was a prog band. It was a prog band? Yeah. What time signatures were you operating in? We didn't know what they were, so all of them. But you have to count them, <laughs> don't you? Otherwise, no. So it's just complete chaos? No, we just figured it out. That's regressive, regressive. rock, that is. Cause no, it's prog. It's what? beyond time signature. It transcends you know I don't like time maths. signature. Yeah, I do know that. That's why I was asking about time signature. Because I thought eight. there's no way you're going to... 7-8? Yeah. I'll give an example of a song that's in 7-8. Yeah. Money by Pink Floyd. Okay. Oh, no, wait. 7-8. <laughs> okay. Or 7-4. Seven eight, was it seven eight? Yeah. Seven eight. What's your favourite time signature? My, f if I had to pick a favourite time signature, um, and I you could only write in that for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's always going to be. I think I'm quite. I think it's like, if I said to you, my favourite sexual position was the missionary position. Yeah. What's what's that reflected in in time signature? What would that be? 
four four. It's four four. <laughs> yeah, it's four to the floor. You some... can't beat it. There's just no way to beat it. Is it laziness? It's partly that, but also I think fear of d- uh, new things. Fear is not the right word. Concern. I, I'm just skeptical of this. Concern. <laughs> I'm not. I don't fear it. I just. I. Not, you're not, you're not I just op- don't like. It's it. Not your optimum. I like listening to, to things that are really, really interesting time signatures. Like I always go on about Planet X, which has got thirteen eight or thir- uh, and then nineteen eight as well. Like weird stuff like that. You like to count, so only because yeah, I like <laughs> the idea of having Mass. to sit there and count to figure out what's happening. But I don't think anything has the same emo- emotional resonance as a four four. Why? Because part of why I think part of why you enjoy listening to rock music is because it's the tease and release so if you think oh in a bar or so there's going to be a drum fill and then the section will change to the next bit which might be the pre-chorus or the chorus or it might yeah. be the guitar solo but you're expecting it and then when it hits you it's like that's that's what i was hoping for it's like when you shake a a gift and you go oh is that going to be an familiarity. ipod what you like familiarity no it's just like Unexpected familiarity. Well, it gives you a certain satisfaction when you when you think you know what's going to happen and then it happens, and then like, oh, I was right, yay. Well, when you go to collaborate with someone, do you go? We're doing four four. What if someone goes, I want to do a different time signature? No, I, I, I think if somebody said, let's do something in seven eight, I'd be like, yay, Pink Floyd, money. So where do you stand when you go in? What's your role? Um, Who decides? In a coll- it depends on the thing like if it's like a, okay so if it's like you go to a you know a writing session for an established or upcoming artist or something like that yeah. and then I always I'm always just like I wait for somebody else to make the first move oh you're not an initiator not usually no because the thing is I've got loads of bits in my bag so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> but not about my name. The, um, I've got oh, loads we're still of talking about your sex life, aren't we? We are, yes. <laughs> um, I have lots of sections and stuff that I could contribute, but I'd rather see if anything organically occurs between myself and whoever the collaborator is before I start relying on stuff that I've what written on my own. What if they're a bit nervous? Are they usually nervous? I haven't really... Um, I've experienced a lot of different levels of nervosity, which is a actual word. It sounds exciting. Yeah. No, sometimes you go in and it's like, um, I've been in a situation, and I'm not gonna name any names, but it was, it was something that we were doing for an established artist. And the established artist showed up a little bit after me, and it was all conducted by a very, very big name producer. And the very, very big name producer said, I've got a brilliant idea. This person that we're going to be working with today has a really sort of dramatic and accomplished voice, can do lots of different stuff, lots of range and power and dynamics and all that stuff. Um, I think we should do something that sounds like a Queen ballad. And my heart sank a little bit and I was like, ah, really? Why? Yeah, just because, first of all, to try and write something that sounds like a Queen ballad is an enormous undertaking. And I thought, I'm going to be here. I'm probably not going to get lunch. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, my plans for tomorrow have just vanished into vapor because I know that this is more than one day. And um, and then it was like, and I just thought, well, also, Queen, the Queen catalog, is vast and sprawling, and it's stuff that I listen to endlessly, and I know it all off by heart, and I still love it, and it bears repeat listening. There's no need for anybody else to try and do it. Did you say that? I did. I said that in not so many words. I said, ah, do you think that's a good idea? I said, you know, maybe we should see what the artist concerned feels like. And the artist concerned came in and said that he's been listening to um, Billy Squire, huh. which is a much more original, well, much not, not original, but, you know, it's a much more, it was more exciting to me because it's less familiar territory. So... And I know Billy, Billy Squire's catalogue inside out. I've listened to it loads of times. But I feel like what he does is kind of... You can, you can plunder some of the aesthetic of a Billy Squire thing and make it really cool and really different and new and fresh and 
And also the artist was excited about it, so it gives you more chance of getting a cut on the artist's record if the artist is excited about it and present. But what happened was the producer concerned said, let's do a Queen thing. Even after the artist said, let's do a Billy Squire So he's thing. not a collaborator? He was an anti-collaborator? Maybe he was a bully. Was he a bully? I didn't feel bullied. At first. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I don't know. But Maybe it's who decides? Surely the artist decides. Why is the producer deciding? Well, the producer was the one who had all the menus for the takeout food, the premises to conduct this recording and writing session in the cachet of loads and loads of millions of records sold um and was kind of in charge but if you're an artist should he, you're hiring a producer to facilitate you yeah but he was a producer and also was contributing to the writing as well as one of those writer producers you know those people that but sort of where does the artist stand even the writers are there for the artist. But the right? artist is only the artist. It's a different sense of the word artist, isn't it? Like in, in a collaboration like that, the person that has to go and sing it is, so he's just is a singer. the artist. He's not the artist. He's the recording artist. He's a singer. He's the recording artist. <laughs> and like if I played a guitar part or yeah. something like that on this recording, You'd be the recording artist. I would be like probably an uncredited recording perform- artist. Reco- I would be no. I wouldn't be the artist. <laughs> Why? I would be more like a session player or something but like that. But it sounds like this, the artist is a session singer in this situation. Okay, we're getting confused. <laughs> Let's establish the definition. Like, so when you have three people yep. who are contributing to a song and they're collaborating on yep. a song, they're the writers. Yep. And yes, there's art in writing. Yep. And for me, that's the ultimate expression of musical art is in the writing of the songs, right? But the artist... Maybe it's with a capital A, I don't know, but it's like that. the artist is the person that then has to go and sing it, promote it, yeah. tour it, and do all that stuff. So they're the artist. Okay. Or perhaps we should call them the artiste. The face. <laughs> or the face. <laughs> or the face. Let's call it, let's do artiste. Let's, let's establish a they're difference the high, It's like a spokesperson for the song. The public facing... Spokesperson, singer, spokesperson person for, for the song. song. Yeah, let's call it that. That's much more punchy <laughs> than artist. I'm just saying because it's. Oh, by the way, this episode is called Justin Hawkins Rides Again: <laughs> The Jaws of Victory, Pitfalls of the Music Trade, Collaboration, and the Difference Between Art <laughs> and <laughs> Art <laughs> so, with a capital A. What does the capital A mean? I just think art, art, art is what you call something. <laughs> I don't know. You're, a di- you're a d- I don't know. Sorry, I'm I asking too many know. questions. Yeah, and they're coming really quickly. <laughs> it's because we're inside. Should we get some more coffee? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what we need, isn't it? I'll just finish mine. Yeah, just finish your coffee. <laughs> so can finish your coffee. Shut up a minute while I do my introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, hold on. I wrote yeah. some questions. Okay, let's have a look at the questions because that you've written. What's good about collaborating versus being solo? I think um, you've got more chance of getting something over the line and finished if there's two people working on it. Because if there's a if there's something that like if I if you're writing a song on your own as an individual (laughs) artist writer, (laughs) (laughs) I know I'd say that's an artist. (laughs) But you're not though, because like there's people like Jimmy Harry who write a lot of songs, Mm. other people sing them, so he's not the artist. No, he's not though. He's <laughs> they're the spokesperson. He, the, yeah. So, for example, he might write a song for. I'd say that's the artist. I'd say the songwriter is the artist. And the, like, if you put a painting and then you put it in a frame, <laughs> the singer. <laughs> no, the singer, like, the, uh, the the artist paints the picture. Yeah. Frames it. Yeah. Submits it to, for <laughs> display in yeah. a you know gallery of some sort. And the person that shows you around the gallery is the public facing face of it. Okay. But they might also be the person that wrote it. Yeah, they could be. Or wrote, <laughs> painted it. <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, what, uh, yeah. keep going. What's the question? <laughs> what's good about it? Oh, what's it? good about it? <laughs> I think the good thing is that like, if you write on your own, then you don't necessarily trust your own taste. So you might sort of um, come up with something and go, hang on, this is a bit shit. And then you shelve it. Um, and I don't mean shelving as in... <laughs> Uh, but the, with the <laughs> you might just say oh I'll, I'll, this bit isn't working today yeah. I'll save that for something else um, but if you're collaborating there's a sort of you might contribute something 
that you would otherwise overlook as being rubbish and the other person might say actually that's good I can see a way to develop that and make it into something that befitting of the composition so do you like collaborating? I really do yeah I really love it you said on the second album you didn't like it why? I didn't, um, it depends because well, it depends on your how open you are as an artist or a writer or an artiste <laughs> or the public facing uh, facade <laughs> of whatever the musical project happens to be um, <laughs> no I think um, I think in that instance there was a, a band that was becoming dysfunctional and um, none, all of us were sort of jealously guarding what we considered to be our department of songwriting you know so we weren't open to hearing other each other's ideas about the things that we would normally be or expect ourselves to So you didn't to want to collaborate on the bits within the bits? Well, for example, so like if, so, like if I was whole. sitting there feverishly kind of trying to write a lyric and then somebody said, what about this line that's got this thing? And I'd be like, <coughs> shut up a minute, I'm doing this. You know, I'd be like that. It's mm. my fault, really. Is it an ego thing? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> you, you expected me to deny <laughs> that. <laughs> Fuck that, it's true. And, and a royalties thing, right? Mm, less, less so. Because we always had like a, an arrangement. <laughs> but it's more about like, um, I think if you, because if you're the artist, if you're in a collaborative band project and you're expected to play a guitar part, you want it to be something that you love. So the ideal situation would be you come up with your own guitar part. Yeah, because if you're singing this, a line. And then, and then, all, then every Frank, time I say, And then Frankie's line just... comes in every, every third. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get really annoyed comes, and, and you can gig. see it coming on the horizon I'm, and I see, you stop enjoying the lines that you've written because you, you think can tell oh, when God, you're singing I, I've got to sing this horrible line coming up when you're on stage you're all happy and then that line comes and then I just I have a micro you expression of sadness it. just yeah. in that line yeah happens yeah yeah mm. well what's the worst thing about collaborating well that because you <clears throat> is there anything bad about it I think there's a greater ch chance that you end up hating the thing that you've worked on <laughs> And under, well, I'm not even sure if that's a bad thing, to be honest, because you know, you're, you're writing for an audience, aren't you? Is it difficult? Is it difficult? Yeah. <laughs> everything's difficult. But is that difficult? I'm not asking about everything. Is it what? Difficult. What's difficult? Like, what's the diff it's collaborating with people? Is it hard? I think when you're just about to walk into a situation, there's trepidation, fear. It's a daunting moment, you think. Is anything going to happen? Am I going to like this person? Will I enjoy doing it? Is the song going to turn out to be a bunch of old shit? Those are the things that you fear. And that's what makes it difficult as well, because you get in your own head. And also, another difficulty is, you might really click with the other person, and then you start pissing about, and you write something that's never going to go anywhere. This happened to me with, uh, it happened to me with a singer, a uh, songwriter called Sam Endicott. Was that, that was recently, was it? It wasn't that long ago. Well, actually, it was, it was a few years ago. Maybe it was about 10 years ago, actually. Oh. It was about, no, more than that. <laughs> but I'll never forget it because, like, I went into that session and it was like, and I'd had, I'd been in a lot of songwriting. So I was traveling in America and I was doing songwriting sessions everywhere I went. And I think we were in uh, either New York or LA, somewhere cool. And, um, and I walked in and all the trepidation vanished. We just clicked. But unfortunately, we were pissing around and it was just like a couple of blokes pissing around. <laughs> it's a complete waste of time. We wrote a song called um, Bikram Yoga oh, Woman. Oh yeah, you mentioned it. <laughs> I just, uh, and it's like, the song was like, I saw you through my ankles across a sweaty room, supple, lithe and glistening like a lotus in full bloom. It was, I mean, Why didn't it go anywhere? Because I think huge. Bikram got cancelled because yeah, he did some touchy stuff. Yeah, you need to change it to stuff. like hot yoga woman. But it like <laughs> in the chorus it said 100, 104 degrees, you got me on my knees. It's very specifically that type yeah. of yoga. And the, 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 what, I think the, there was a manager of an artist that, that listened to the song and said, this is brilliant, my wife does Bikram yoga and this made me laugh, but it's never going to get cut. <laughs> so it was a complete waste of time. So that, that, that's, a, that's a risk as well. So you, you needed that producer in there? That was like, no, we're doing Yeah, this. what we had on that day was like an engineer who was very, very neutral and knew how to keep his mouth shut. But in an ideal scenario, somebody with more of, of a production and business head would have said, listen, guys, you've got to stop pissing around. Do you think it's hard to be that person because you have to be the bubble burster? I think the bubble burster is an important role in any collaboration. Otherwise, it's just... 
it's like that thing <laughs> if nobody ever hears Bikram Yoga Woman did Sam Endicott and I ever write it in the first place maybe it's never existed did you record it yeah we'll just put it out on your mailing list <laughs> yeah mine too because <laughs> I, I wanted to repurpose the lyric because I thought it was so so good and um, and I was trying to get it in a darkness song and I wrote to Sam and said like would it be alright if we repurposed this lyric and you know compensated him and everything and made it made it part of the darkness oeuvre and he said um, yeah but the on one condition you have to open with it and close with it on the next tour <laughs> oh no <laughs> so it never happened <laughs> he was right though you know yeah I mean it does exist I'm sure if I spoke to him we could get it out there on the mailing list it's pretty good yeah then do it it's got stuff about sweating in it naturally hmm. what about you know transcendence no but there's stuff about trying not to fart <laughs> which is a, is that the same thing no it's not <laughs> no so it could come across as pervy as guys who are going to hot yoga classes just to objectify the women. Why, did, why would you assume we were singing from the male perspective? Because you're male. It's a fair assumption. <laughs> <laughs> but what if we wrote it for somebody else to sing? We didn't. Yeah, we did. We wanted um, <laughs> <laughs> we wanted Pickery Yoga Woman to be sung by... Um, Beyonce? Beyonce, yeah. <laughs> Beyonce. Mm. That's what we were hoping I don't, for. Uh, yeah. 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 What are the best traits that someone can have to be a good collaborator? Personality trait. I think the most important thing is to not be precious about the things that you're contributing. And you have to sort of, you have to be okay with the idea of playing something. And it might be something that you've had in your bag for a little while and you just want to road test it and see if you can shoehorn it into something um, on those occasions the thing that you're holding on to it's in that bag and it's in your conscience for a reason you've sort of you believe in it but you just know it hasn't found the right home yet so when you show that and then it gets shot down you've got to be ready for that disappointment the pain of that there's a rejection actually <laughs> it's like an emotional rejection and an ego thing again right well, that's all ego. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so much of it is ego. So you, do you have to not be shy then? In an ideal world, you wouldn't be shy. Because yeah. I think I'd find that hard. Yeah. I think you would. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, no but I think everybody finds it hard. I think Cause, it's just... Yeah, because you go, what about what, this? And someone goes... Psh. One of the things I've noticed, though, is um, when um, when you're a musician from from the UK and you cut and you're like I don't know when you're my age you remember what it's like in the 90s have you ever seen that footage of Blur accepting an award and being gracious towards Oasis and then Oasis accepting an award and being just total c**t to Blur with no grace or dignity at all it's just embarrassing you know um, that was the sort of climate like you the idea of Oasis and Blur collaborating on something is fantastic but also completely unlikely because of the egos and and the sort of the rivalry and all that stuff but I think in America it's totally different in America it's always been like the musicians always stick together and there's always this there's less kind of we do our thing and we're and jealously guarding your your sort of niche in a Is saturated it just a British market. mindset this is I did now. think it was for a minute, actually. But I think it might just be because, you know, the, the UK market is a, is a huge, it's a huge music market, but it's one of the, it's not the biggest one. No, but it's, it's a big one for a national one. Yeah, but I think America is just so much more vast. Everybody looks after each other a bit more because they know that it doesn't matter if Nickelback did a collaboration with uh, Metallica. They would, both of their fan bases would, like, would be really furious about that, but they might cross over and help each other. They w it wouldn't cannibalize, is what I'm saying. Do you know what I mean? Like it was, uh, yeah. So many more. There's so much more of the cake to share around <laughs> that everybody. But can are people be, not collaborating more now? In the last. The, I do think it's changed. You a see little everyone bit. featuring everybody. It's like someone featuring someone. It's featuring changed a someone. lot. Yeah. Do you think that's the internet that's changed that? Maybe it's because it's harder to, maybe it's just easier to get a hit if you have as many names on as possible. I mean, 
the, what do you think about the Coldplay and BTS? Oh yeah, we did that. We did cover it, yeah. Well, what did you say again? <laughs> I think I enjoyed the actual song. Did you? Yeah, but it was difficult <laughs> to reduce <laughs> to a degree, <laughs> but you know, for what it was, you know. But um, I think you think they were trying to get onto the BTS market. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> difficult to imagine a collaboration like that occurring f due to artistic merit or the, you know... A love I, of each other's art. I, f I, don't think, I don't think the members of BTS were listening to Coldplay going, hey, we should do something a bit more Coldplay-y. <laughs> I don't think they were doing that. And I don't think Coldplay have ever listened to BTS and gone, you know what, guys, we should introduce some elements of this to our music because that's what our audience would love. So you think it was just a giant promo video? I think it was... Like a showreel for their audience. I basically. don't think BTS wanted to adjust their sound to be more Coldplay and I don't think the opposite was true. I think it was... and This is a wild theory which really left field, okay? Is it? It's going to blow your minds, guys. I think yep. Coldplay looked at the BTS fan base yep and said, if we do a song with these BTS lads, yeah. there's a good possibility that millions of people will then listen to Coldplay. Yeah. The BTS fan army are quite intense. So is that art? Yeah, I think we discussed that at the time, didn't we? Did we say it was art or content or was it traffic or what was oh, it? I said that content is traffic towards the art. Why did you pronounce it content? <laughs> content. <laughs> is that a Freudian slit? Slip. <laughs> I've always said content. Content? You can't say I'm that. I'm not. You're going to have to bleep it. No, I, I say content if I'm saying. <laughs> no. But why are you saying content? You're saying, you're saying that the BTS Coldplay thing I didn't is content. Say that. <laughs> why are you pronouncing it like me? Because that's how you said it. I don't know. I think I've been getting it wrong all these years. Um, I, I'm not saying that. You said it was a good marketing strategy. But, you think but it, isn't it like when you get support bands, the same thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, close your ears. <laughs> You're like showing them a new audience. Well, in the instance <laughs> of... Um, <laughs> okay, there are instances when that's true, you know, if you're struggling for tickets and stuff. When your tour has completely sold out in the UK, <laughs> you choose your favourite band because then you know that it's going to be a lovely evening for everybody concerned. What if they don't like your music, but they're just doing it... But they're just going to... Well, they'll, they'll conceal that. <laughs> yeah, so they're doing <laughs> because it for they're polite reasons. young men. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, know. I'm talking about. Yeah, but I'm not talking about your perspective. Oh, so I'm you think the support band's the, perspective. So the idea of bad nerves coming on the UK tour is that Bobby can you know then when people, you guys are supporting have the same cheering. haircut as me <laughs> and be the same height and build and steal all of our in, Front row. enthusiasts. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, but it's like when you supported Ed Sheeran, people were like, "What? <laughs> so what are you doing there?" Do you remember the, uh, <laughs> the Ed Sheeran? I mean, this isn't a, technically a collaboration. This is a support. That's what I'm talking about. But there were people in the front row like this. Oh! Oh! Refusing to look. And then when they did, oh! Yeah. They were really grossed out. Why I, was that? Because they'd never seen a man's body before. They were like 14 or something. And I think they were shocked <laughs> there was to one discover or two girls, what, I told what, you what a man's body yeah. actually looks like. Yeah, because they're used to seeing a T-shirt. Edge's t-shirt. Wasn't that one? <laughs> <laughs> Their only exposure to the male physique um, was... I saw a few girls that liked it. Remember I told you? What? I saw a few girls who liked it in the front row. You've got some new After fans. After the second or third attempt. <laughs> you got some new fans there. You got like three or four new fans from that 70,000. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they, they probably weren't the ones that started off going... Oh, no. Oh, oh. Did you like it? Actually, that's my favourite response I've ever had, actually. <laughs> it's just so disgusting. They couldn't even look at me. Oh, yeah. those are the days. So what, what's the best rock and roll collaboration of all time? <sighs> I think it's got to be Run DMC and Aerosmith doing the walk this way. Yeah. Because I think it... Um, that's the first album I bought was Raising Hell, which was on... And that was on there. And I think both audiences were treated. And it was an amazing recording. Why do you think they did that? I think they did that because I reckon it was... If I had to guess, I would say that Rick Rubin probably wanted to work with both of those lot. 
I reckon he put it together, but I don't know. I think it was also resurgent post sort of um, getting clean-ish Toxic Twins era. And Run DMC, there's a lot of rock stuff on that record. There's a lot of guitar playing, you know, so I think it made sense that their audiences would welcome something like that. And it was a brilliant video. Yep. Absolutely brilliant video. But, yeah. You know, and it got me into rock and, and rap. Yeah, your so, rap career is my favorite. I mean, I didn't really focus on rap. It's more of a passion. I should have done, yeah. I mean, I'll start dropping some of my hip hop stuff. And on the dropping, floor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will definitely, uh, I'll definitely be unleashing some of my more rap based. Uh, I, I, I said that yesterday. Well, the thing is, I, tra I transitioned from being a, a, a pure rapper to, you know, doing more spoken word, dramatic monologue stuff. Yeah. Um, Black Shook's basically a rap, isn't it? Monologue. There's some rapping in it, yeah. Yeah. But I, when I rap, my, my influences as a rapper are, you know, it's people like Daryl Mack and. Alan Partridge. No, I was going to say, like, people like Daryl Mack, uh, David Brent. <laughs> so people like, no, um, no Daryl Mack and uh, William Shatner. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically it. You know. When has it gone really wrong, collaboration? Well, has, has a writing session ever been ruined? Yeah, there was something that was sour. I, was, uh, I had an experience when... A, a, when a writing session soured after the event really because I think there was a situation when there was a band that I was working with that I was producing and um, and I sort of there was one song that I thought was really good but it sort of didn't have a strong enough verse and I said well look guys if you want I can help kick this verse into shape you know and give you some give you some ideas for lyrics and stuff like that but it'll have to be I'll have to be in on the publishing and we came to an arrangement about that and then when, when the record came out, it was on their record. Yeah. But they didn't credit me. What? Yeah, which was kind of... I don't mind uncredited performances as a guitar player or something like that. I don't mind that. That's normal. And, and, and sometimes I don't really want... I don't care, really. But when it comes to writing, I'm actually a bit precious about that. And I think writers should be precious about that. It's really... So in a way, it's your legacy. You know, I always think that lyrics and music, they need to be good enough to exist separately that means you put effort into both both of them you know you want to be able to whistle the tune and also quote the lyric and then have it recognizable that's why crazy baby really drives me mad so like i i, I don't know i always concentrate on that stuff and and work so when you work you want to be credited with it because i never would submit something i'm not actually kind of a bit proud of did you say something uh, i did actually <laughs> yeah, I did. It, yeah i said a lot of things actually. what'd you say just a lot of stuff did you get i don't want to go into too much did detail. you get credited what? Did you get royalties? I don't know, actually. I don't think it's sold enough to be an issue. But it was the principle, really, as opposed yeah. to the money. How do they, do royalties ever ruin the split, like the splits, those conversations? I mean, I think those are things that can go wrong, like if you're collaborating with somebody and then they have a different idea of what the, what's a fair remuneration for your contribution and what, what you should be compensated, you know, what percentages and stuff is probably something that if you're collaborating with somebody you ought to discuss before you do you even begin no because I always if I go into a writing session I'd think okay it's Nashville style which means 25 if there's four people yeah if there's four people it's 25 that's yeah but <laughs> I suppose the reason why I said that thing with the, with the band that overlooked the opportunity or you know declined the opportunity to credit me I think I said to them if I do this even though there's more of you in the band, I'll be taking a quarter. <laughs> but I laid it out beforehand. Because the band are just And they had like an opportunity to say, well, actually, no. And then it would have been a negotiation, at least, you know, we yeah. could have had the conversation. Yeah. It's difficult. It is difficult. <laughs> I mean, that's diff that, that was a particularly difficult thing because there was already like a song there. Yeah. And so everybody sort of probably had an idea of what they were expecting to get from it. And then I just came in and ruined it all. <laughs> you know. But if you talk about it at the beginning, then it's... Yeah, it's like, before I do this, this is the deal. That's kind of what I said. Does that not sour the atmosphere? Or does everyone really just know they're trying to make money? 
The thing is, if you do, if I said a situation like that, and then the collaboration was occurring after the songs made, if I then sort of do something and they go, actually, I don't like that, but can we go back to how it was? I'd be like, yeah, cool, no problem. But if they go, oh yeah, that's much better. Can we keep it? Yeah, of course you can. You know the deal. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So I don't think it's as long as you're clear at the beginning. I think that's a pitfall that's easily pitfall. It's a pitfall. Yeah, pitfall is is arguing about percentages. And the other pitfall being precious. Precious is a pitfall. Do you think some people are good facilitators rather than contributors? You mean like an organisational? No, presence? like they're good at getting the best out of people, but they're not actually writing the music or the songs, the lyrics. Like a vibe controller. Yeah, someone who's good at bringing it out of an artist. I'm sure there are people like that. They're more like motivational speakers than. Well, <laughs> I don't think they're in there giving a speech, are they? <laughs> no, they're no, more like they could be you like, can do it, lads. You can come up well, with they a could chorus. Be like what about that or that? And you're like, oh no, actually this. They're just giving you roadmaps go down well they might say I don't like that bit it tastes a bit too Beyonce-ish yeah or hang on a minute guys I recognise this one it's from you've just ripped off ACDC again is that that's, you're that guy aren't you sometimes yeah <laughs> I am actually yeah. yeah I've done I've had that before I remember Dan this is Dan said to me oh I've got this uh I've got this chord sequence, I don't think I've ever heard it before. And he started playing it and I just started singing, Lay, lady, lay. <laughs> <laughs> lay across my big brother's bed. And he went, oh, fuck. But you guys are really strict on that. You have to be. I think you have to be. Everyone should be. It amazes me some of the things that people write without... It's almost like they've never listened to music before, <laughs> before the last oh, 20 years. they have and they just sort of like... Like someone who makes a cupcake and then makes another cupcake but puts something else on top. Or take something out of the <laughs> initial cupcake. What are they taking out? Anything, oh, yeah, that, anything resembling originality or sentiment, you know, yeah. feeling. Anything, <laughs> anything. <laughs> it's just like, a, it basically, like, they take a cupcake and then what they create. They take the sprinkles off the cupcake. No, they take the cupcake out and they just leave that little paper thing oh, there. the little thing, yeah. yeah. But it looks like a cupcake still. It has a superficial, <laughs> it has a shadow of a cupcake. But you know that the cupcake it's itself... It's a gluten-free cupcake. I don't think they've taken the gluten out. I think they've taken anything f flavoursome. No, it's, it's cupcake flavour, <laughs> but in a little capsule in the middle of the paper tray. That sounds horrible. Mm. How do you feel when like, um, you listen to an album <laughs> and it's an artist that you really like, All right. and then you get to a song and you go, wow, I really, really like this song. Yeah. And then you look at the sort of song credits and it's a, it's a songwriting collaboration with an artist that you dislike. And then suddenly you're obliged to acknowledge that you actually like that artist. Has that ever happened to you before? Probably, but I don't really mind that. I think it's like a nice feeling like, oh, they're not as bad as I thought they were. Does it inspire it's you like to go someone, back and check out If someone was mean to you and then one day they smile at you and you're like, oh. You know, um, <laughs> remember I've got this weird relationship with the NME and I've always had this kind of yeah. distrust of them and never really respected them and vice versa, really. Um, there was a situation where I contributed, like I did, I collaborated with um, Rivers Cuomo on a Weezer song and it was called I've Had It Up To Here. And it occurred, it, it was on the album uh, Everything Will Be Alright In The End. And, it, and after my song, there's a song called The Brits Are Coming or something like that. It was written by somebody else. But so apoplectic that I had contributed to a Weezer album were the enemy that they slagged off what they thought was the song that I had written. They, they assumed it was The Brits Are Coming because it sounded like a British heavy metal guy has written it. And he wasn't. I'd written the one before that they liked. Uh. And they were really slagging it off because they thought it was me that wrote it. But they'd got it wrong. But, oh, I mean, that's, that poor other guy. Doesn't that show you about the integrity of their <laughs> journalism? And people's biases. Yeah, it's very, very biased. And the, I think the person that wrote it was probably someone they'd normally like, but they got it all wrong. People don't want to be proven to like something, do they? I think it's like one of the pitfalls is like what you're expected to contribute to a, to a collaboration. So what do people expect you to contribute? high-pitched <laughs> high-pitched kind of uh, <laughs> histrionic vocals and stupid lyrics with knob jokes in and stuff like that probably guitar solos and maybe a massive guitar solo i mean you do like doing that don't you yeah i mean 
I'll always try and get Do you prefer contributing lyrics or guitar solos? I've no preference. I think the, the nature of the collaboration is that whatever instrument is at hand, you'll go and play something on it and try and come up with stuff. It's just, it's creativity, pure creativity. That's the good thing about it. It shouldn't really be a roadmap or anything unless you go into something and then it's, but then it goes back to that question that we always ask about is like the integrity of writing something bespoke. Yeah. Like I've have had, well, I have had. We, we were having this conversation yesterday. We didn't actually record it. I know, but <laughs> we yeah. did speak about it earlier. Yeah. So technically I'm still right. No, you're right. Just for everyone just watching. Just earlier. Just for everybody up. watching. He's like, I didn't see that episode. <laughs> yeah. It was just our non-recorded no, coffee. Let them go around and look at all the episodes <laughs> to try, try and find it. Um, but I think there are situations when you might go into a collaboration and they'll say to you, okay, we want something that's this BPM. Ideally, it would be in this key because it's ideal for the artiste to sing in that key. People think there's keys. I don't think there are. I think that's just... I think mean, that's bullshit. You don't think there's keys? I don't think there's keys that are good for voices. Are you sure? Oh, wait. Well, I, from individual, my own experience, individual voices? Yeah. I totally think that's true. I mean, like, if, like... But someone's like, that's too high no, for me. But it's not... Yeah, okay, but if the melody is a certain way, but you can't determine the key of a song before you start the collaboration. Because, like, if you say to... If I said to... You said to me, okay, I love singing in E major. Does that mean I can't write something in F? Don't know. No, it doesn't. Because it if I wrote something in F and you sang an E, a high E, which is your favourite note to sing, that's a major seventh of an F. So you're still in key, and you can still use your voice in that way, and you'd actually probably be making a more interesting melody. So if you've got a voice where the hot notes and the raspiness and the, and the kind of the real warm tones of your voice are on like a high E or a middle E or something like that, that doesn't restrict you in any way as to what the key is so nobody should ever tell you what key to write a song in I believe so what happens when someone tells you what key to write a song I in? ignore them <laughs> I ignore them completely Do you just tell them it isn't that key I just <laughs> I know I just pretend they haven't said it because <laughs> it doesn't make any sense it's like key key is irrelevant you know? okay but they, if they said to me I really like singing this note yeah that's much more helpful okay because you can contextualize that with an interesting chord and make something that's actually original so these are helpful collaboration tips. Are they? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So, so I think don't don't think about keys. Like I've had it. I've, I've done a same thing where I'm sitting there singing a song, and somebody said, "Oh, so A minor is a good key for your voice." And it's like, well, no, <laughs> it, it makes no difference because a lot of those notes will occur in an E minor scale. You know, just, why would you restrict yourself? You know. Okay, so that's another pitfall. Pitfalls, yeah, pitfall is. What are the like, lists um, again? Don't be precious. Don't be precious. What was the other? Don't one? be a dick. Don't. <laughs> you said something else before. I've already forgotten it. What was the? Yeah, don't be precious. Don't. Oh, the royalties thing. Yeah, make sure you establish who's getting what before you start. Yeah. And have something that's fair, because I don't think it's. You don't think you can say, well, I wrote this, 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 and this, and then you wrote that, because I don't think that's how a collaboration should work. You should work in. You should operate in good faith so people aren't fighting for the right. things that they've done because they think it's going to reflect in the, in the percentage overall. Like you, need to, you need to say, I think the best thing to do is say, look, whatever we make from this, we share it equally. I think that's Except that. if you just sit in the corner and do nothing. Yeah, unless you sit in the corner and do nothing, in which case you can't use my stuff and I don't approve any exploitation of this and you won't be able to use it. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> You can lend me your suit, but if you take it back, I'll shit in it. Or so, you know what I mean? It's one of those things. You can actually spoil it for people. If, if, if you go into a situation and nobody do, and you're yeah. the only person doing any work, then you can say, well, this is an unapproved. What if just one person doesn't do work? And they're not the singer, they're just then the I, I think in that situation, I'd be like, come on, do, do, do a note, do something, you know, say a word. Let's, let's have, say a word. <laughs> say a word and I'll put it in. That's it. You know, just, or whatever. Any ideas? And I would try and encourage that. I've been in a situation when a guy did absolutely fuck all. Fuck all. Absolutely fuck did all. Did he get the money? It wasn't any money, of course not. What course did you say no to money. him? I said, uh, all right, nice one. We'll do this again sometime. See you later. And then just walked off. Yeah. What was he doing? Looking at his phone. Oh. That's not nice. No. Okay, then it the was, next... It was rude. That was the worst part of it, I think. Oh. So don't be rude. Don't be rude, yeah. 
don't pick a key. I think mean, don't restrict <laughs> yourself to a key before you've even... Who decides the key then? <clears throat> the, the song decides the key, doesn't it? And then you can, once you've got the melody, if, you're, if the artist is there, you can move the whole thing around and sort of try different capo positions and different voicings. And then you can modulate the song and find the right thing. But you should never restrict yourself to a particular key before you start, because I think that's just, it's going to make life much more difficult. Okay, what's another don't? Another don't. Um, I don't think you should, um, I mean, I know there are some songwriters that do it, but I don't think you should give yourself like a time limit. And don't be, don't be disheartened if like the, your collaborator or you have to go and go off to meet somebody or do an appointment or something like that. And then it's an abridged session. Like, a, I, don't, I don't think anything's ever wasted if you do it in good faith, you know. There's always going to be a place for the stuff you come up with, just not in that moment. You don't have to finish anything. You don't have to stri stick to certain hours. <laughs> you know, just do, just do whatever. That's What's another do then? Do. So we've done don'ts. You go in. I've entered the room. <clears throat> what do you do? Say hello. Hi, how you doing? You're right. <laughs> what should we do? Yeah. All right. What's this for? Who's this for? That kind of stuff. And I do say it in that voice as well. Yeah, I can imagine that. Mm. Um, I think it's... I, don't, I can't remember how it goes, really. Some, everyone's different, you know. But there must be... Is there any, like, things that you recommend people do? Or is it just things don't? I think it's just, like, get an instrument in your hand as quickly as you can. Just start trying, playing anything. I've seen I've seen there's one song songwriter that I worked with who does a thing where he just starts playing and then channels some sort of spirit <laughs> and starts going Apparently that's normal. <laughs> oh, and then that's like the, that. the, then the the words form yeah. where, as he does it and then <laughs> baby baby write that down. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. I mean, it did. It was that. It was a crazy baby. It was crazy baby. It was crazy rhyming with baby. I just don't like the word baby <clears throat> in general. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it? Is because that, does it I don't like calling people babies. Yeah, there's nothing sexy about babies. I don't know why it's like, hey, baby. Hey, baby. I'd rather say, hey, I don't know, grown man. <laughs> hey, man. People do say, hey, man. I know, but that, they, yeah, but baby. <laughs> man is like, a, <laughs> when, I moved, when I first moved to London, I noticed that everybody was sort of calling each other man. I was yeah, like, I don't like. And even like people like who I knew from my hometown, I was like, hang on a second. When we lived in Lowestoft, I never heard you say man. And then you go to the big city and suddenly you're cool and you start saying man. And then I tried doing it and it just sounds completely unnatural. <laughs> like, hey, man. I, th I think I even sort of like looked to the side here. What am I before? doing? You say mate, don't you? I never used to say mate either. What do you say? Baby. Hey, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said to Bobby earlier. Isn't it? Yeah. He thought I said Bobby mate and I got away with it. Mate is very English, so yeah. <laughs> what? Mate is very English. Don't say it in Ireland. Softy does mate all the time. He all says, men do it when they are trying to be cordial. <laughs> you know what I really hate? You know the worst thing? What? There was a trend. Pal. What? Pal. No, it's, there's a worse one than that. You Boy, know what yeah. it is. You know what it is. What, in Wales, where are we? Swansea? <laughs> Chuck. No, no, just let me say it. I'm you'll know I'm right when I say it. When you go into any sort of cafeteria and then you go, cafeteria? all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, and you've got your tray <laughs> you're going along. And then, and then there's some things you can slop out yourself. And then, uh, then you'll get to like to the bits cafeteria. that are like, and then the, the guy turns around and says, all right, buddy, what can I get you? Oh, buddy. Buddy? Fuck off with that buddy. That's... I had a chihuahua called Buddy. Yeah, you did. That Why? was his actual name. Why did you call Buddy Buddy? his fucking name. But, you know, you can't go... I, I would never, All right, Buddy. Buddy. It's so... It really... It's like fingernails on a blackboard for me. I hate that. Yeah, women, it's dar People don't really say darling or sweetheart anymore. Treacle? Except for Essex people. Princess. <laughs> Precious. What are they calling? <laughs> They don't call me anything. I like being called sweetheart and darling. 
I like it when a bus driver says it. I think it's good if men call other men <laughs> darling. That's good. It's quite disarming, I think. Buddy just makes me want to fucking go into a, darling might a get murderous you in a fight. rage. You never you know. know. You what? If you called a man darling, the wrong man. I just think it's the sort of thing that Freddie would say, and that makes it okay. Oh, like a camp version, yeah. I don't know if it'd be camp necessarily. You could do it in a masculine way. All right. You should use it for the rest of the day. Yeah, because I think if you do it in a Roger Moore way, but to a man, yeah. you know, it's like, um, all right, darling, can I get to, <laughs> you know, a oat flat white? I <laughs> know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, darling. Yes, darling. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. Is it camp when I do that? It is. Even when I'm doing Roger Moore? Yeah. All right, darling. Yeah. Really? It is. It brings a little bit of campness. Everyone likes a bit of campness. Did you say Gilbert campness? <laughs> <laughs> brings a little bit of Gilbert campness. <laughs> well, I did not say, I did It's not like a new that. level, an upper echelon of camp. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> nothing wrong with being camp, though, is it? No, it's good. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? But you're not camp. No, I wouldn't say so. No. Rugged. Yeah, lucky rugged out here in the rugged, <laughs> sheltering myself from the from a light breeze. I just can't handle it. <laughs> I have no chest hair to protect me. It doesn't do anything, does it? You've grown there. Mouth hair. <laughs> <laughs> I've grown the mouth hair. Right, should we get back onto the collaborations? If you can imagine the best person you've ever collaborated with, um, what were they like? Apart from Bikram Yoga guy. The re uh, yeah, the most rewarding collaboration I've ever been involved in worked because the person that I was working with had a million ideas, but not didn't have the musical vocabulary to, to, to turn those into a realized thing. Yeah. So then it was very obvious what our roles were. It was like pure creativity. And then like my, my role was honing that and making it, I don't know, translating that into music language, basically. That's, that's, and it was so fun because it was sort of, there's a there's a creativity in in interpreting that and there's nothing but energy in there so there's just an un, that's quite nice though an unbridled resource of just ideas and then like all i had to do was translate them it was awesome it was so fun that's quite good though for people to know because i don't have much new musical knowledge and you don't want to collaborate with people because you don't have the vocabulary but i think that's quite how a lot you're of those like, what if it's say you just say things when there are people who've got amazing voices but they don't have the training you know and they don't have the you know what i mean they don't have the understanding or they don't have the experience or the education or whatever it is they just you know they're just talent yeah and those are the people that are really really fun to work with and they, they also tend to be artists because they're artists rather yeah because then you know but we, but i feel like that those are those are really fun because you've got to get it right because then you get rep uh, the opportunity to do it again and and i've heard examples of the same people that i'm talking about because it's not just one i can think of two off the top of my head that have been like that where it's really just so rewarding for me you know and then to see their little faces when they see what you come up with to interpret their idea it's just amazing experience it really is like the, that's why i think songwriting is the most fun because you can really finish each other's ideas you know it's just so good it's just like it's a beautiful it's beautiful it's yeah, I'm, I'm nearly welling up thinking about those experiences <laughs> for real so it's, it's better it's if, awesome. if you don't have the same skills yeah if you got if you collaborate with someone with the same skill set it could be really hard work. But when, I don't know, if somebody who has just ideas is, is, is just really inspiring. It really is. And then you get like, and if you do it, if you put everything you have into that and then your skill set complements their ideas, that's like an, an abiding collaboration that you can come back to and you always look forward to working with that person, you know. It happens rarely, but but I think that's the I don't know. There's this. There's a lot of different ways to approach songwriting. Like as as a writer, you can go into a lot of sort of cynical situations where they're telling you what tempo, what key, what, and then telling you what other songs that they want to sound like. And it's but when you have something that's pure like that, it's just oh, it's chef's kiss. 
It's chef's kiss. I can't kiss. believe you just said that. It's chef's kiss. <laughs> Why did I? Why is that unbelievable to say that? I don't know. I've never heard you say it. <laughs> I know. Normally I go. Whoa. Yeah. No. Now you're saying it like. I'm saying it like. It's very new generation. You know why I'm saying it like that? Why? Because this is going to be an audio podcast as well. But they would have. They think I'm kissing you. Me. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> just randomly <laughs> during. No, I think they've gathered now that that never yeah. happened. <laughs> <laughs> this must never come to pass. <laughs> Bobby, go and get some coffees, will you, mate? Oh, someone's eating, oh, what time? Wait. <laughs> what time um, is no, it? No, I've got another question. Oh, God. We've got like <clears throat> five minutes or so left. <clears throat> what about collaborating live? Oh, you mean like in the instant? <laughs> we've, yeah, we have just focused on songwriting, yeah. haven't we, the whole time? Like on stage, what's it like having, an, is it weird having a person you're not familiar with on stage? What if they walk into you? What if they take your spot? Oh, I, you know what? Sometimes I hate it when people ask, <laughs> you know, because it, when it's a contrived thing. Well, I used to really hate it. I used to hate that idea. And sometimes people write to me and, and they say, oh, um, I'm a, you know, percussionist from Swansea. Barnsley. <laughs> from Swansea. <laughs> all right, boyo, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a percussionist from Barnsley. Um, and they, they say, all right, buddy, I'm a percussionist from Barnsley. No, nothing wrong with Barnsley. Lovely little, lovely city. <laughs> South Yorkshire. Why Barnsley? Isn't it? I don't, I've don't. i never heard of it. Doesn't matter. Anyway. Um, yeah, anyway, so, all right, buddy, uh, I'm... Justin. No, no. Oh. Cri cri <laughs> Craig. I, no, I, I'm. Oh. Better not be Richard. <laughs> it's not going to be Richard. I, I was going to do Richard. But <laughs> I'm or Thomas. You can't use Thomas either. Ricardo. <laughs> Ricardo, Ricardo from Barnsley. Barnsley. Yeah. All right, boyo. I'm Ricardo. I'm. Hey, Try buddy. Try like an M word name. Hey, uh, hey, buddy. I'm. Mohammed from Barnsley. And I'm a percussionist. That's your coin. Yeah. There's a lot of Mohammeds in Barnsley. Yeah. I'm, I'm Mohammed from Barnsley. Um, and I'm a percussionist. I would love the opportunity to get up and play with you. To which I, I... I'll always ignore that. Yeah. I just think that's... No. But then... You know, having been in, in America and seen how other bands do it, if anyone's in the house, they always go, why don't you come up and do a song? And then it's always a great moment. Yeah. And we started doing that. You better learn. I believe in a thing called love, by the way, because we started doing that with the a two-minute version of it. Yeah, <laughs> it just, <laughs> it really you just fast. did a second two-minute. I was covered <laughs> the first bit, but um, but then like we've started doing it now, where like we'll get the entirety of the support band up yeah. for a special night and and do a song together. It's just great. It's a really good yeah, feeling. Southern River Band, you got them on a lot. Yeah, and we did that with um, Diarrhea Planet as well. Um, which was great because there's a lot of those guys. I think there's about eight guitar players in that band. And it sounded amazing. Really bad. <laughs> but it was cool. And I love it because the drummer always is obliged to just do the yeah. cowbell. That's just or the, oh yeah. You don't have a tambourine, do you? Um, they don't, you don't have a tambourine in maturing setup, but sometimes they bring their own. Ah, yeah. That's good. So that's good. That is good. Yeah. What's the faux pas of going on stage with someone? How do you coordinate best thing to do is wrestle the microphone from the singer oh yeah and then awkwardly try and sing into it at the it's same Brian time Jones. people love that <laughs> they just love so it so there's 90,000 people in front of you yeah. what are you going to do not be take the nah, microphone I just need the microphone not know any of the words from one of your fa <laughs> most favourite yeah, singers just like a uh, just try take and it away Justin yeah uh, I don't know the words cut and then sort of stare blind <laughs> bleary eyed at the uh, teleprompter which has no information on it anyway didn't have any no there was no information. i don't know if he knew the lyrics i think that's why he invited me to come and do that but you know the wrestling of the microphone that's not but a i feel like he's got quite a strong grip like he's like a pocket rocket mm. of a man he's just an all-time legend yeah. and he has a, a, a he has brian johnson has as you suggested he has a vice-like grip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like this. And nothing could persu persuade him to release the microphone. And then when I came off, the, um, the stage manager said, you know, we, had, we actually had a microphone for you <laughs> set up here. And I was like, ah. Oh. It wouldn't have been as iconic. It wouldn't have had that brilliant photo. And also, wouldn't, you wouldn't have been able to 
get away with not knowing the lyrics. Yeah, I would have been you obliged. Just, you can just move away when you didn't. I could have looked at my phone though. If I didn't have two hands trying to wrestle. I think everyone was too excited because I was side of stage, I think, when he asked you. Yeah. And then you're like, I don't know the lyrics. I'm like, somebody Google the lyrics. Yeah, <laughs> I think Rufus Googled the lyrics for me. It was too late. It's too late. It's hard to get internet Imagine when there's 90,000 people. It would have been better if you had your phone singing back and blind. <laughs> it would have been, been fucking amazing. That's the picture. With like, with like him looking at me like, like that. <laughs> Yeah, so that was, uh, yeah, I mean, I do, uh, faux pas, I don't think there is such a thing. Any don'ts we can recommend to people when they... Live? Say, yeah. <clears throat> don't worry. Don't try and steal it. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the moment. So don't try and steal do it. Do enjoy the moment. Just, yeah. Actually, I don't know if there's... There's no don'ts. Just do. Has anyone ever done anything you didn't like? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> there was one, uh, one of our dearest patron children, Jake McMurray. He came in. I, I got him. I got him up for um, open fire in uh, in Austin, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and he does this thing where he gets the microphone and he goes Austin, Texas and starts shouting the place and I'm like ah oh, I wish I'd thought of that <laughs> it's actually really cool you got a huge cheer yeah. and it was a brilliant thing to do really yelling the place <laughs> the place that you're in into the microphone so if I had a do it's yell the place that you're in yeah, yeah you don't do that do you? I never do that yeah maybe, maybe you feel like it's very cliche I don't, I don't, I just don't think the geography comes into it. I think it's the show. You just, the just don't know where you are. There's that too. There's that. <laughs> yeah. I, I risk a faux pas of saying the wrong place. You know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So, to conclude, do collaborations. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what we come to. Collab collaborations are brilliant and you should always and do the them. the art of collaborating is... Don't be precious. Be open-hearted. Don't be a dick. Try not to worry. Yeah. Um, and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Okay. Even the rejection of an idea is fun. Just have a good time, guys. All the time. Nice one, guys. This was brilliant. Thanks, Jenny. May. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. Hawkins. Yeah. Justin. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I certainly did. You can also listen to it on uh, Spotify and Apple Podcast, all the usual podcast places. Um, I'm going to go back to the uh, recording area to do another episode of Justin Hawkins Rides Again, uh, the podcast. See you later. Nice one. Huh. That's how I walk.